do I think that this is good literature? No. Do I think that this is a soap opera with fantasy elements? Yes. I've never seen outside of soap operas incestual relationships done multiple times ever. So I think it's safe to say that this is more of a soap opera <laughs> than it is fantastic literature. And what's really great about that is that like, who doesn't love a good soap opera? I was planning on doing this after I finished the first book and before I started the second one. But then I ended up just speed racing through the second one. So now this is more of a book review of the first two books of The Mortal Instruments, The City of Bones and The City of Ashes. I'm familiar with the show Shadowhunters and that's it. And mainly I watched the show because of Malik, which I think is understandable. So going into this book, these books, I knew certain plot points and I knew also that it was pretty much a soap opera. What I wasn't expecting was it to be more of a soap opera in the books. I will say like truly if you're thinking like you've watched the show and you're thinking about reading the books, there are parts that are that are similar. However, it like the drama is in fact more amped up. The books also have the characters aged down or I guess I apologize. The show aged up the characters. So I think that that's kind of fun because everything is more relatable in relation to the drama when everyone's 15. Obviously there's going to be some like pitfalls. Like there's, there's pitfalls to both age groups of the characters, but I do think that a lot of the behaviors in the books makes a lot of sense because everybody is 15 fucking years old. I also did not realize, okay, here's like my question. My question is for people who read The City of Bones when it came out, but the sequels hadn't come out yet. Like if you have read these books and there was like a space of time between them and also a space of time between them where no one fucking knew the plot what like how was the drama about this incest like truly truly like i need to know like were you like reading this as like a a, a 14 year old like oh my god like were people having debates over like jason clary like what what is going through people's heads because like i'm reading this frankly I'm reading this and this was something that I did not read in the show so it was a special treat. I am really dedicated to Simon slash Jace and mainly this comes from the City of Ashes. So Simon is a vampire and he's been exsanguinated and Jace like gives him some of his blood but like he definitely likes it like a lot like texturally a lot. For somebody who like isn't into dudes, that that's sus. The drama, the drama. It is so focused on Clary and Jace, which is like not what I would have preferred. And there are definitely things that I'm glad that the show did. For example, like the antagonism between Clary and Izzy in the book, I just think is really unnecessary. I mean, it's very to its early 2000s time, so I get it. But at the same time, like, come on, powerful women should support powerful women. Like, why is this a thing? Alec is such a weird character in the books. I really don't know how I feel about him. I, because on one hand, he's such, he's so off to the side and Izzy's like this too. The, the Lightwoods are so off to the side that it's really hard to get a read on them in the books. Like the books are so focused on the love triangle of Clary, Jason, Simon, that everyone else is kind of 
pushed to the side, which I think creates really fun consequences of like, like Alec and Magnus's like secret relationship throughout the city of ashes is so good. Like it's so comedically funny. I love that Cassandra Clare did it that way. I'm assuming that at some point, like it becomes more apparent. Clary is so focused and thus the narrator is so focused on her own issues that she doesn't notice that two of the people in her close circle are dating. You know, like that's, that's so good. That's so good. And then all of these conversations become like, from at least my reading perspective, like blatantly obvious relationship conversations. And then it's like, oh, I don't know why Alec had Magnus's number. It's like, oh. <laughs> so, they're so stupid they're 15 <laughs> ah! but back to Alec I, I don't know how I feel about Alec's personality I'm hoping that he develops further in further books I mean there's six books so like let's get a move on but for right now especially in City of Bones but City of Ashes is pretty much the same. He just seems like a really hot mess with kind of a bitchy personality, which I don't hate. But when you only get so much screen time with a character and that's all you get from him, you know, it's not it's not like a vibe. Like I'm not like, yes, it's just like uh, okay. <laughs> like you got kind of bringing it down but all right although I do like this dynamic of not even the narrator admitting that Alec is in love with Jace everything is really like under the table and I think it's really well done frankly I do think that there are pitfalls to that with like certain readers but I thought it was I thought it was pretty great. The thing that I'm like most surprised about, and this is like I, I haven't watched the show in a while, so maybe I need to rewatch the show. I didn't realize that at the end of the second book, you would still think that Jason Cleary were siblings. Somehow I thought that like the the incest ruse would be up by then, mainly because it's just like like Cassandra Clare really went for it. She was like, I'm gonna make you ships an incestual ship and you're gonna like it. Like, like she was really upset that Luke and Leia didn't end up together in Star Wars. Like it's very odd. Like, so reading it from the perspective of someone who knows that they're not actually related, I'm like, what was she fucking going? <laughs> like, what was she going for here? Are we supposed to converse about ancestral relationships in in the modern day is she like is she pulling an Arundhati Roy the god of small things are we supposed to have like deep conversations about what kind of love is you know sanctioned and wh what kind of love isn't and why like what what is her argument here because right now her argument seems pro incest but also her argument seems like I'm writing a soap opera for fantasy teenagers, you know what I mean? So like, it's like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I feel like every other plot, and I felt this way in the show too, I feel like every other plot, aside from Jason Clary's, is more interesting than Jason Clary. And this always, like this often happens when I'm reading this era's YA fantasy books. Like this happened when I was reading The Hunger Games, like as they were coming out, I was like, why are we focused on the most boring characters? Like it's like the Bella Swan effect. Like you have all of these characters with really sick backgrounds and really sick shit going on, but we're focused on Bella Swan. Like why? So uh, there's that level to it. And like, once again, it's part of the era. Like, I get it. 
But it really sucks because, like, especially in this case, all of the characters are clandestinely doing cooler things than whatever Jace and Clary have going on with their incest. Oh my god, also a side note, I almost fucking forgot before we leave. I love bookstore Luke. Uh, why, why is he a cop in this show? There is something so powerful about, one, thinking about how this man who is bookish and nerdy and kind of lame, being the parabatai of fucking Valentine, but also that this bookish, nerdy, kind of lame man is also the head of a werewolf pack in which he had to kill people in order to become the head of the werewolf pack. Like, what is this double life? They went for like 100% Luke is cool in this show. Like they were like, he's gonna be a cop and he's gonna be a werewolf and he's just gonna be like ripped and very cool. But like in the book, you have this like really relatable, tired father of a bunch of teenagers. And not that like Cop Luke isn't tired, cause he's tired, but there's something so visceral about the fact that this bitch owns a bookstore. Like it just, it, it, it brings out so many images that make everything funnier. I'm thinking like cable knit cardigans and stupid little knitted ties and like freaking khaki pants. And like this guy also, like the khaki pants guy, also runs a werewolf mob. See, that's a man I can get behind. That, that's, that's, that's a man I can get behind. I fucking love that. It's, it's the Will Smith effect and I am legend. Like freaking they told me that he's blonde in the books. I'm like, I, <laughs> no. No, it's too late. He's black. Like, it's over. <laughs>